Hello my dear children and parents. Welcome to class 8th of Indus Valley Public School Rat where we will do poem 6 from your honeydew book. And the name of the poem is The Duck and the Kangaroo composed by Ewood Lear. Ewood Lear was an English artist, illustrator, musician, author and poet. Now known mostly for his literary nonsense in poetry and prose and especially his limerick a form he popularized. He was born on 12th May 1812 Highgate England. His principal area of work as an artist were threefold as a droughtsman employed to illustrate birds and animals making colored drawings during his journey which he reworked later sometimes as plates for his travel books as illustrator of alfred lord tanninson poems as an author he is known principally for his popular nonsense collection of poems songs short stories botanical drawings recipes and alphabets he also composed and published 12 musical settings of tanninson's poetry he left this world on 29 January 1888, San Ramo, Italy. So basically he is a cartoonist you can say or he used to compose a poem taking the character sketch as in animals. Okay. So this is about the poet. So now my dear children before moving towards the poem. I would like to tell you about that this poem the duck and the kangaroo kangaroo sorry the duck and the kangaroo related to two characters the duck and kangaroo so I would like to introduce what who is kangaroo and who is duck kangaroo is a very gentle animal native of Austria it carries its young in a pouch in front of its stomach they are also called as marsupials. Okay. And the duck is a common fowl often raised for its meat. A close cousin of the duck is the Indian swan. They appear, they appear on water. Their webbed feet are actually paddling vigorously under water to keep afloat and moving. So in this poem. Here we will see the importance of friendship and how they take care of each other's feelings, emotions, etc. In the poem, there are two characters, two persona and they are the duck and the kangaroo. The poem elaborates the desire of duck who was confined with the limit of the pond to go beyond and travel the world like kangaroo. The duck praises the hoping ability of kangaroo. Okay. So here this is about the poem. Now moving towards the poem. The first stanza of the poem. Said the duck to the kangaroo. Good gracious. How you hop? Over the fields and the water too, as if you never would stop. My life is bored in this nasty pond. And I long to go out in the world beyond. I wish I could hop like you, said the duck to the kangaroo. So now here conversation between the duck and the kangaroo is there. Duck sees the kangaroo and Praises, or you can say she is outstruck, captivated to see the movements of the kangaroo. It expressed that kangaroo could hope continuously over the fields and water bodies. The duck's life was boring as it remained in the pond. And here it is saying pond as a nasty pond and the means of nasty is unpleasant. Okay, and so she wants to, uh, sorry, it wants to go out of that pond. It wished 
to see the world beyond the limits of the pond it wishes that it could also hop like the kangaroo okay so long means dearly wish for something okay and the rhyme scheme in this stanza you can see a kangaroo then b hope b then kangaroo two say are similar so again a we are taking hope and stop similar so b b pond beyond similar sound is there so c c and a uh, again a u and kangaroo sounds the same good gracious we have alliteration okay so this is the rhyme scheme and uh, good gracious alliteration so poetic devices also we have got okay now coming towards the second stanza of the poem please give me a ride on your back said the duck to the kangaroo i would sit quite still and say nothing but quack the whole of the long day through and we would go to the d and the g boli over the land and over the sea please take me a ride oh do said the duck to the kangaroo so here again quack is the sound made by the duck so now again the duck is requesting the kangaroo to give it a ride on its back and it promised that it would sit quietly sit steadily and would not say anything only it will do quack all the day the duck list the places that they would visit d and li boli jelly boli it adds that they would hop all the land and the sea again she is requesting to the kangaroo who is requesting the duck is requesting to the kangaroo so again quack means sound made by the duck and rhyme scheme a b a b c c b b you will find alliteration here sit quite still okay now coming to the next stanza 3 said the kangaroo to the duck this requires some little reflection perhaps on the whole it might bear me luck and there seems but one objection which is if you let me speak so bold your feet are unpleasant wet and cold and would probably give me the rheumatism said the kangaroo so now when duck requested the kangaroo to go to, to give her a ride then kangaroo says something before that reflection here means thought so now kangaroo replied that it had to think over it the idea could be good for him but he had an objection so objection means complain what kind of complain that the duck's feet are wet and cold and if the duck is going to sit on its back then he is going to suffer with a disease known rheumatism okay it's similar to the cold okay so he is given an objection that i do not have a problem to take you but there is a problem what kind of problem because you used to stay completely in the water so your feet are wet and they are very uh, this thing cold so they will cause me rheumatism let's see so the rhyme scheme used here is a b a b c c d d okay so duck luck same pronunciation reflection objection bold cold ru kangaroo okay so this is the rhyme scheme in this stanza number 3 and what else you find here in the stanza number 3 there are uh, you can say one objection alliteration is there okay fine coming next to the stanza number 4 so now in the stanza number 4 said the duck as i sat on the rocks i have 
thought over that completely and I bought four pairs of worsted socks which fit my wet feet neatly and to keep out the cold I have bought a clock and every day a cigar I'll smoke all to follow my own dear true love a kangaroo so my dear children worsted means woolen cloth means cover so means uh, overcoat that we used to wear uh, you can say either in the summer so that we can protect it from the sunlight or you can wear in the winter in order to protect ourselves from the cold so that is cloth so it's a whole covering of the body you can say that kind of dress so now again Jack is saying that uh, when I was sitting on the rock I already gave a thought to it okay so what kind of thought she gave let's uh, it gave we should see here so duck said that as i sat on the rocks during the day it had thought over it in order to avoid that what avoid the wet and the cold feet so that it can it should not cause any harm to you the duck had bought four pairs of worsted socks worsted means woolen socks and which will fit its web shaped feet very well so in order to stay warm it will wear a shrug or it will wear a cloth and also smoke a cigar every day the duck would do all this to protect the kangaroo as it was a beloved the love for kangaroo means beloved for kangaroo okay so here she will do uh, it will do all kind of precaution in order to protect kangaroo rhyme scheme again you'll see rocks socks same sound completely neatly same sounds so a b a b clock smoke c c true kangaroo d d so this is the rhyme scheme now children see the line number five and six and to keep out the cold i have bought a clock and every day a cigar i'll smoke so and and so anaphora is there in the line children one more figure of speech is there enjambment e n j a b m a n t enjambment that it means when a sentence when a single sentence we used to write in two three lines for example you can say a sentence is there uh, like my name is so and so so my name is one line so and so in next line so when one complete sentence we write in two three lines then that figure of speech is known as enjambment so here in the line you can see how all to follow my own dear true love for a love of a kangaroo so this one line is there it has been written in one sentence it has been written in two lines okay so new figure of speech is there now coming to the fifth stanza said the kangaroo i'm ready all in the moonlight pale but to balance me well dear duck sit steadily and quiet at the end of my tail so away they went with a hop and a bound and they hopped the whole world three times round and who's so happy oh who as the duck and the kangaroo so now here in the stanza the kangaroo was satisfied with the duck's response and got ready for the ride at night when the sky was filled with pale light of the moon they started their trip with a hope the kangaroo asked the duck to hold it firmly and they traveled around the world three times both of them enjoyed each other's company so here steady means stable and fixed bound mean to jump and the rhyme scheme is a b a b c c t d other literary devices are alliteration but to balance repetition of b dear duck repetition of d sit steadily sorry sit steady that is repetition of s then uh, you can come here whole world w went with again w is there so these are the uh, alliteration then we have anaphora like and they hope the whole world three times round and who's so happy oh who so repetition of and is there in the starting so anaphora 
children one more uh, right, this thing is there figure of speech that is enjambment that we have learned in the previous stanza also like uh, here you can say but to balance me well dear duck sit steadily and quiet at the end of my tail so here one sentence is uh, written in two different lines so enjambment is there so here we end with the poem and we have seen true friendship and in friendship they care each other before a problem is shared all a resolution is there so a quite humorous and a lovely poem it is and in this poem so value your friendship care your friendship and do good to others okay my dear children so go through the explanation and any doubt please to call me up and clear your doubts till then bye bye take care and thank you so much